Our first speaker is Michalis. He is a PhD student with Dr. Panayla Polrazi in the Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology in the Foundation for Research and Technology, Hellas. He will be speaking to us about adding dendrites to spiking neural networks in brain to in brain to using dendrify. So up to you, Michalis, please. Can I start screen sharing? Yes, please. Is everything okay? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. So, since I only have five minutes to present most of the slides, I will be I will try to be quick. So, in short, uh, I'm going to talk to you about why one might need to take dendritic properties into account when building spike in neural networks then how dentrify uh, can make your life easier in regards to point one. And what can one achieve using dendrify? Dentrify is a software we it's developed 330. in the lab uh, that uh, helps you make uh, uh, spiking neural networks with dendrites. So why dendrites? Uh, one of the main reasons is because they can act as semi-independent threshold units. Uh, they have some voltage gated channels, either calcium, sodium, or, N uh, or NMDA channels, and they can produce local dendritic spikes, similar to what happens in the soma. Also, these spikes can be either forward propagating, traveling uh, from the dendrite to the soma, or backward propagating, traveling from the soma back to the dendrites. So, uh, uh, importantly, um, dendrites are not isopotential dots. They have very complex dendritic uh, structures and uh, uh, the numerous pathways, either inhibitory or excitatory, uh, go to specific dendritic locations. So having a point neuron, uh, you lose this uh, local interaction between pathways and, uh, and you leave uh, back an important um, uh, property of uh, neurons. Uh, moreover, uh, in some cases, uh, um, synapses can be clustered, uh, meaning that a synapse from a specific pathway can go to a specific dendritic branch, or disperse, meaning from a, spe a specific pathway can innervate multiple dendrites. And uh, dispersed first class con cluster connectivity defines the input output uh, relationship and the internal uh, computations of uh, dendrites. Uh, last but not least, uh, there are emerging theories that, uh, new, uh, that dendrites and not neurons are the key memory storage units, but this, that's a long topic and I'm not going to elaborate further. So let's go to Dendrify. What is it? Uh, it's a Python package that works with Brian2 simulation and uh, actually it helps us uh, build uh, neuron mod compartmental neuron models with um, active dendrites. It's quite easy to use. You just create a compartment and then you can connect your compartments and it automatically generates the uh, differential equations expressing this, uh, this model. Uh, let's say, in, ah, this is uh, other, either way you would have to do this manually. I mean, if you are using Brian and you have to make compartmental models, you have to write uh, equations like that manually. And if you want to have something more complex, let's say you have three compartments and three different pathways, either excitatory or inhibitory, you can uh, add them with just one command. I mean, to add, uh, for example, AMBA synapses, you just take uh, the compartment and you type dot synapse, and then you have the equations for AMPA in this specific. And just for this very simple example, with three compartments and uh, five pathways, you have uh, all these equations that in the past would be really tough to, uh, and error prone to write. Okay, let's see this in action now. Let's say we have three compartments only and uh, some synapse going to the apical dendritic branch. Uh, just to see how it looks like, uh, we apply some current injections in every compartment and see what happens. Also, every compartment is automatically connected to a noise source. Now, if we perform a classic uh, test of input-output relation, uh, input-output relationship, meaning that we activate a, a different number of synapses at the same time uh, on the same dendrite, and we see what happens to the EPSPs here when you have only AMPA and when you have AMPA and NMDA. 
And we can see that models of uh, this ab abstraction, uh, uh, so simple, can capture the NMDA-dependent um, dendritic nonlinearities. And um, further, uh, apart from synapses, you can, one can include dendritic spikes just with one command. So uh, here we have this model. We have this, uh, here is a soma, and we have three apical, uh, three apical branches. And this is the distal branch. And you can see when I have some best uh, activation of the distal uh, branch, we get some dendritic spikes. And these are caused not by the Hoxing-Huxley equations. We want to do it as efficiently as possible. So we made it phenomenologically. When the dendrite crosses a specific threshold, then uh, some currents are activated for simplicity, I call them sodium and uh, potassium channels, but they have nothing to do with uh, this, it's just you know, for familiarity reasons. So uh, threshold crossing is uh, triggering the production of this, uh, the activation of this current. And uh, one can uh, manipulate them very easily. I mean, you can choose how high uh, the activation of sodium is by, uh, by picking the, uh, the appropriate uh, conductance or you can uh, define the kinetics and um, yes, this is the <laughs> main mechanism. Okay, uh, apart from forward propagating spikes, we can also have backward propagating spikes. Let's say we have activated the dendritic uh, spiking mechanism into all the compartments now, and we applied some current injections in the soma. As you can see, the soma fires, and then what we have is we actually have some backward propagating spikes across it's the soma, then the trunk follows here with green, then the proximal part with uh, orange, and then with purple, the distal part. To do this, apart from having activated the dendritic mechanism, we did something like a small hack to the integrate and fire model. Uh, except of having a single reset when the, volt, uh, the soma fires, we have a double reset mechanism. First uh, at threshold, at spiking threshold, first, first the soma goes up, uh, this is what we call the first reset. And then after a few milliseconds, we say uh, we reset the voltage to what would be traditionally the um, voltage reset with uh, integrated fire models. And uh, this up and down, the voltage is sufficient for some passive propagation of uh, um, uh, currents to the adjacent compartments. And when the threshold is crossed for the drilling uh, spikes, then we can have actual the drilling spikes with integrated fire models. Okay, so um, let's put this in test with something more realistic now. Uh, we know that in the C3 pyramidal, uh, pyramidal neurons, uh, there is one very well-defined um, pathway interaction between the synapses going to the distal part of the dendritic tree and the uh, oblique dendrites of C1 pyramidal neurons. When you have a lot of input in the distal part, you may have some uh, dendritic spikes, but due to dendritic attenuation, nothing happens to the soma or to the other branches. At the same time, if you activate some synapses here, here we have some subthreshold synapses, you get nothing in either direction. But if you coactivate the synapses in the top and the bottom, you get some dendritic spikes, and eventually uh, you have some somatic activity. And we try to replicate what happens in vitro with a simplified compartmental model uh, that has this geometry here. And first, when we put some uh, super threshold uh, current, that's, this is uh, one short pulse of current, 50 milliseconds, uh, we can get uh, the dendritic spikes in the distal part, but uh, very minor responses to the other compartments. Then when we have some, uh, this is what happens here, right? when we have some subthreshold current injections in this compartment, but when we have at the same time a current in the top and the proximal uh, dendrite, then we have the production of the dritic spikes and eventually the som uh, some somatic activity. And even more interestingly, uh, when we apply, let's say TTX, uh, technically we just close the mechanism completely, uh, the same input that previously gave us uh, somatic activity now is uh, the same neuron now is silent, meaning that the dendritic spikes are uh, really important in this specific scenario when we want, when multiple pathways interact, and it's like a coincidence detection mechanism so that the, fi the soma fires when both pathways are active. Okay. Uh, would you like to answer a question, uh, Vikalis? 
There's a question I, I, for you. I would you. rather finish shortly. Okay, fine, minute, fine, 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 fine. Together. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, how much time is left? Uh, you have about two minutes with you. Oh, okay, I was really quick. Yeah. Uh, for model validation, uh, I wish I had more time to discuss about these really nice papers, but. Um, here, uh, whoever is interested to have some, let's say, realistic, a few compartmental uh, models, I highly recommend these two papers here. Um, that's wh how uh, what I use um, with um, combined with dentifiers to make my simple neurons as realistic as possible. And uh, in summary, what is dentify? Dentify is like a toolbox. Uh, it has some Lego style code that the basis of the code is, let's say, a compartment object. In each compartment, like little Legos, you can add uh, extra properties, you can add synapses, you can activate the dendritic uh, mechanisms. So there's no need to know hardcore uh, computational neuroscience or programming. It's simple as that, as I show you here. This is just for one compartment. The complex, uh, when the complexity increases, of course, you have more code to write, but I think it's like Lego style, uh, Lego uh, style, and it's scalable. And uh, such pieces of code automatically create all the equations for you, plus some custom Brian events, plus some uh, model parameters. And eventually, uh, this code results in some uh, realistic, uh, as possible actually, not super realistic, uh, simplified models that have active dendrites. The reasons that we need them, but I didn't mention earlier, is that uh, when you have, uh, when you want to have spiking networks, you can't have super uh, detail. I mean, if you go to full morphology models with 1,000 compartments or more, then you lose significantly, significantly in computational power. Here, with just a few compartments, you might uh, you may lose some uh, biological realism, but it's far better than the point neurons uh, used uh, traditionally. And this is my last slide, literally. And a special thanks to my supervisors in the lab here, Panayota Poirazi, and my co-supervisor, PhD in the lab, Spiros Havlis. Also special thanks to Dr. Doug Goodman and Marcel Stimberg for the awesome uh, feedback at the early stages of this project. Also, they are the, uh, uh, the creators of the Brian Simulator. If you haven't used it, go check it out. It's really awesome. And if you, want, if you have some questions or regarding the project or dendrites or modeling in general, you can find me here or you can follow me on Twitter. That's all from me. I hope I was in time. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question for you from Daniel. Uh, he says, I assume the brine to backend takes care of the compilation. Is the performance good for very complex morphologically realistic models? For, uh, I ha uh, you're asking about full morphology models, right? Complex, yeah, yeah. Uh, Basically for complex morphological realistic models. Of, uh, I'm not so sure how the internals of Brian work and all this project is not uh, extensively text in, term in terms of uh, performance. But I guess that having a model with, let's say, 10 compartments is much more uh, efficient than having 1,000 compartments and uh, so many, um, you know, um, channels running at the same time. And simulate, uh, I mean, the whole, pro the whole point here is uh, that someone with um, some minimal uh, requirement for computational neuroscience or programming can have some realistic models that are also really efficient and they can run large scale uh, simulations uh, that incorporate active dendrites. I, I'm not so sure about the full morphology models, but I guess they're much more computationally expensive than uh, these showed here. Uh, there is, uh, and there is, I hope so, Daniel should be able to tell us. And there's another question. Yeah, Daniel says yes. Uh, there's another question from uh, Sotiorios. Uh, he is asking, what is the representation you use to import your generated dendritic structures into Brian? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? I couldn't hear you very well. Yeah, yeah. What is the representation you use to import your generated dendritic structures into ah. Brian? Thanks, Sotiris, for asking. That's uh, one thing I couldn't uh, mention earlier. Uh, I don't import the full morphology because I'm not interested in this specifically. 
what I really want to do is to try to squeeze all this uh, morphology into this thing. And uh, if you are interested for the rules on how I can do this, uh, I highly recommend you to test these two papers. Uh, they, they solve the problem for me. They, they, uh, what they do here is they try to take 1,000 compartment models and squeeze them to 10 compartments with as minimal loss of uh, um, uh, validity as possible. And they have some very specific rules on how the reduction works and what you have to be consistent with and uh, what you can sacrifice or not from uh, the complex model. Great. Uh, we have a question from yeah, Ian. Please continue. Uh, from from me, you hear me? No, uh, it's Ian. Ian uh, from one of the attendees. He wanted to ask a question. Uh, okay. Ian, you can talk if you have a question. You can ask it. Uh, he's muted, by the way. Yeah, but the permission has been given. I guess. Maybe some issue. Let's see. Okay, fine. Let us continue with the session. And in the case uh, he gets back, we will talk to him. Right? Okay. All right. So we uh, had a very wonderful talk. Thank you so much, Mikales, for this particular talk. It was really interesting to uh, know about Dendrify. Next, we have in line Sotiris. I'm sorry.